It is currently cleaning and prep time for the van. I am working on getting ready for one of my biggest trips of the year. I always do, and this year's so far actually is going to be even bigger than it has been. And it has to do with my Chasing Fall series that I do every year, which gave me the idea, since right now I'm kind of at home base getting things prepped, to reflect with you guys a bit and share some of my top memories I have made over the last few years chasing fall. Now a quick side note, if you are new to the channel, I am a full-time nature photographer and the fall of 2021 was the first time I actually gave this a shot to be on the road, create content and see what I could produce as a landscape photographer. Then I guess the rest is history because I have been doing this now for the past few years. Now I do other things with my photography as well and other video stuff, but that was the trip that I first really started to pursue landscape photography. So naturally every year, this time of year, is a great time to reflect and look on how far I've come as a photographer, as a person, business owner, you name it. This has always kind of been a nice uh, milestone and benchmark for me. And since last week we were in a location that also was where I first started dabbling with landscape photography, kind of been feeling nostalgic. So we're gonna take a look back together. Some of this is ugly. Some of this, uh, the color grading on some of these, it's not the best. I was shooting on my smartphone on some of these. Some of the photography I can even nitpick, but it's always fun to see where you've come from. And also there's some newer stuff in there too from last year's trip. So now the first moment I wanna share with you is honestly one that I wish I documented better than I did. It was such an amazing moment, but I really didn't know how to do this whole video and taking photos at the same time thing. So it's really quick, but still a cool moment, still a great photo. So let's jump to that clip and show you guys what I'm talking about. Now I was gonna be early so I could beat the crowds. As you can see here, there's about 10 other photographers there. But before everybody else arrived, I was the only one that witnessed this awesome scene and I am very happy with the outcome of that shot. Well, you might be wondering, Riley, why are you sitting down by your tires? And the reason is I frequently get my tires rotated and balanced. And if you guys don't do that, then I highly suggest that you do, but usually every other oil change or so, I will go ahead and get these rotated and balanced. Now, also from time to time, if I know I'm gonna be on the road for a long time, I go ahead and just do a full service, and that's kind of what I've been doing. I did my servicing because it was about due, and I went ahead and got my, rotate, my tires rotated and balanced and got my brakes checked, so we're gonna be uh, golden on the road or as golden as we can possibly be, which while doing this, it kind of reminded me of my first time ever out in the field creating a vlog and I was actually in my old truck and I actually had a flat tire happen overnight and created a little bit of a problem. Now that problem ended up leading into a pretty cool moment that, not a fall photo, but was taken out chasing fall. So it's going to count. So let's jump to the field and hear past Riley talk about this moment. It's funny how life has a way of putting things in perspective really quick right and you know kind of rewarding rewarding you a little bit let me show you what i'm looking at how about this look at this scene <laughs> i didn't shoot this landscape because there's really not good light right now the reason i found this though is i ain't i'm not kidding when i'm coming down the road there is five mountain goats in the road so I quickly, I mean, I'm mad because they kind of started bolting, but I didn't really spook them too bad. They got down onto their ledges here. So I quickly put my <laughs> telephoto lens on. I don't even have my boots on. I have freaking, look at this. Yes. Great, right? I'm a stylish person. Um, <laughs> I grab my telephoto and I turn my car off and I book it down here. But perspective, just by being out here, you know, if I didn't get that flat tire this morning, I would never have seen these mountain goats because I was going the other direction. Everything happens for a reason. And I guess that's the lesson from this is adapt, react. Don't you know, have that victim mentality. Keep plugging along and man, you can be rewarded with some awesome moves. First off, these views are gorgeous. Look at these trees behind me too. But again, I mean, I wasn't planning on shooting mountain goats at all. 
I mean, I freaking sprayed and prayed. I probably just took 200 photos. Like, worth the whole trip. Right there. Worth it. Perspective. Now, right now I'm looking back on my Onyx off-road, which if you guys haven't seen the video where I talk about how I use Onyx to find cool camping spots and photography locations, I'm going to link that down in the description. Um, I might also put it up here for you guys, but essentially Onyx off-road allows me to look at off-roading maps, mark waypoints, all of that. So I create a, a library of reference for where I took photos and where I parked and all that. Um, it also helps me find new spots. And this next location I actually found using Onyx. Um, I was I was scouting out the different roads I could go up. It also shows me which is public and private land. In, in that Colorado area, there's a lot of ranches and stuff, so I want to make sure that I'm respecting the private land in that area. And I was able to use the 3D function by putting both of my uh, fingers on uh, the screen and was able to see that this particular pond had a really cool view of Mount Sneffels and there's been a reflection shot of Mount Sneffels I've been looking for and I was like you know what I think this is it so the night before I went and scouted out sure enough it was it I went ahead and made camp um, a bunch of snow came in that evening the next morning was pretty cool so let's go to the field and see what happened that morning <laughs> Now the little bit of clouds that we had in the morning around blue hour and the first bit of sunlight, not long after that, they burned off completely. I was happy that I was able to grab a shot though before they left. Now I have my camera bag right here and the reason I do is this camera bag is actually full of brand new camera equipment. And I'm not going to share with it what's inside right now and the new equipment I got because that's going to be in next week's video. So shameless plug right here to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, if you are curious about the new kit I'm running with. But thinking back on my past years, there's actually a fall photo I took using two different focal lengths. And it's pretty cool to see the differences that you can create with different focal lengths with your camera. So I thought this would be a cool moment to share uh, leading into next week, where we're gonna be talking about some camera equipment and how these tools can help me create better art, create better photos. And some of the tips might help you guys, if you're fellow photographers, create better photos. Um, honestly, sunrise was a bust this morning. Uh, there's a lot of low-lying clouds that was keeping really anything good from hitting the area I was in. I was able to grab a couple drone shots, though, that I think worked out pretty good. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, it's kind of a bust. Um, I don't really think I got anything good. 
but um, I've been kind of wandering around up in this area and I got to this place called Crater Lake um, just on uh, just above Fish Lake and I, I found got in this this area and there's these really pretty backlit aspen trees and then I saw this lone one over here it's kind of orange it's backlit that was absolutely gorgeous I shot on my telephoto as well but I decided to grab the wide angle because there's a bunch of these cool rocks over here and I'm going to see if I can frame up something good and uh, I'll walk you through that um, kind of showing you what I'm, I'm looking at here um, I might mess with this a little bit more um, I feel like the top end of this frame is kind of running the risk of uh, being kind of tight but I like where that sun is hitting and I like this foreground here some like some rocks and stuff. So I might play with this. I might get up a little bit higher with my tripod and check that composition out. Uh, but for the most part, I like this backlit aspen tree. I think it looks awesome. But there is some like colors kind of going on in the background there too that I might kind of want to highlight as well. So I may end up liking the telephoto shot on this one more than the wide angle, but let's play around and see what we can get. Now I stuck with the original composition which has that tree pretty pushed towards the top of the frame. However, I really liked how the rocks in the bottom end of the frame were holding the whole composition together. So that's why I stuck with this. Now I mentioned that I took an exposure earlier with my telephoto lens, which is this shot here that is drastically different than the first shot. I'm not sure which one's my favorite, so please let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. I would really like to know. So if you don't know, the battery to a Sprinter is right here. It's kind of a pain to get to and to get out. Now it's nice that there is a way to disconnect the battery pretty easily. So if you're ever doing any work, uh, they did create a separate, a separate way to uh, disconnect the battery. But for most of you, you're not going to care unless you're other fellow van builders or Sprinter owners. The reason I talk about that is I had to replace my battery this week. My battery was going bad. I was starting to get this notification on my dash. And what happened is my battery became resistant and it was not receiving the charge that the alternator was wanting to send to it. And it was freaking the computer system out because um, there was it was wanting charge but not receiving charge. So long story short, I got the battery replaced, which reminds me of last year on my trip, the literally as soon as I get to the location, a check engine light comes on the van and Thankfully, I did have a code reader and kind of figured out it wasn't that maybe that big of a deal. There's a van shop there called Adrenaline Vans. They're very popular. They host a lot of cool events. Great shop. Great people. They helped me out, got things cleaned up for me. It happened to be my EGR check valve was getting, uh, had too much carbon buildup and was creating, um, or was getting stuck. So it was throwing a code that way. So they cleaned it up for me, got me all taken care of. And, but before then, I decided to head up to a spot that I knew I could get the van to and could get the van out of even if it got put in limp mode. So that morning actually ended up turning out being a really special morning. So let's jump to the field and see what I captured. This morning has been so far very incredible. I mean, it's hard to beat that view, but got some color in the sky over here. Hopefully we start to get some of the mountains lighting up here. Sorry, it's kind of windy, so I have no idea if you guys are going to be able to hear me or not. This morning, as I was setting up the shot, I had, there's a bull elk down here bugling. My God, it's windy. I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys in the van after I get these shots. shoot was exactly what I needed to lift my spirits. 
and to make things even better, for a split second, a rainbow appeared and I was able to get the shot. Now this image behind me here is a really big print that I made for a client a couple years back and they are currently moving so they asked if I could hold on to it for them. Um, I went ahead, they had some damage on the frame so I went ahead and rebuilt the frame for them. Um, but I'm holding on to it for right now and using it for some marketing purposes until they get settled and then I'll go and reinstall this for them. But this picture right here is probably one of my favorite fall photos I've ever captured. And it happened in Colorado the first year I was out there. So now this video isn't the best. I wish again I did a little better vlogging this, but I didn't. It's all about growth. I was filming this on my phone. My phone actually cuts myself off if I slip, when I flipped between the different cameras. And I didn't know this back then. Uh, so it's a little choppy, but you'll get the gist of the story and see uh, what I was thinking about when I photographed this and all the different shapes and compositional elements I found in there. Check out this scene. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I did shoot it on the Fuji that's sitting down there right now, um, and I, but I had to shoot it kind of as a vertical panel. Um, so, because first time ever doing that on the camera and I have not seen any of these files on my computer yet, I have pulled the Canon off of video mode and I'm uh, gonna go ahead and shoot because I have that 15 millimeter lens on there. So it gets me just a little bit wider reach. Um, the Fuji, I only have a roughly with 30, 35 millimeter equivalent of a 23 millimeter, I wanna say. So a little bit wider here. Um, the wind is starting to pick up though. So I may be stuck with the Fuji. You'll see I got a couple shots here, but I'm waiting for the light to kick back in and light these aspens up. It's about to happen though, so I'll go ahead and I will uh, capture this image and I'll talk to you guys through it uh, on the computer. So one of the main reasons I believe this composition works is due to all of the repeating shapes, primarily triangular shapes that are visible within this scene. Starting first in the bottom part of the frame, you can see there's a nice triangle formed by the foreground I used, and then another triangle formed by the clouds reflected on the pond. You can then make the argument that there are triangular shapes present in the trees, um, as well as rectangular shapes to help bookend the framing. And then finally, at the top end of the frame, you also have a triangular shape formed in the sky. These type of repeating shapes is something I always look for when I'm composing an image, and I really do believe it helps draw your eye through the scene in a unique way and really adds to the beauty of this overall composition and photograph. Now let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section, but by far this is one of my most favorite images from the entire trip. After I captured this, I went ahead and headed back to the mountains where I was able to find some more beautiful mountainscapes. Now in the last vlog I did, I told you guys that that location we were at was actually the same location the very first fall chasing fall vlog I ever made was filmed at. Now, obviously, all of this nostalgia has you thinking back on on everything. And as a nature photographer, I don't rely on just one income stream to pay my bills. There's a lot of different income streams that I've created that allows me to uh, have this lifestyle and have um, flexibility to be on the road. One of those is obviously doing the product reviews that you guys see. I do a lot of marketing for clients. Um, I also sell prints like you guys just saw um, before the last image I shared with you. I sell a lot of prints and some of my print business is actually what's called commissioned where somebody will ask me to go photograph a specific area and create a print for them. This next image is actually the first ever commission work I've ever done and 
happened to be just in a place in Utah and accidentally stumbled across this location. I was able to have some pretty cool conditions, get it shot, get it printed, and the client absolutely loves it. So let's jump to the field and see how I captured my very first commission piece. All right, you might struggle to hear me because there's a lot of traffic um, and wind right now, but um, this shot, man, I just kind of stumbled across this shot. This is awesome. Um, I kind of walk you guys through what I'm looking at here. So we can kind of get in some reflections here, which is so awesome. Um, I'm trying some shots polarizing, which gets rid of those and also keeping them there. Um, but then I also got the light kind of hitting um, the sun's kind of like up over here. So I got the light hitting these aspen trees and it's just, wow, what a scene. Um, really beautiful. So hopefully it turns out good. I was going to keep shooting it here though and shut up because the light's kind of coming in and out. So, all right. So what I've been doing is I've actually been playing with different tripod heights. Um, when the light, the sun kind of goes behind a cloud, I'm actually looking, it's about to come back out right now. So when it goes behind a cloud, I've been changing my tripod height. I got it all the way up right now as high as I can go. Um, I shot a couple mid shots as well. And then I might try to get low, but I don't know if low is gonna be good on this one. I think being above it, looking down, cause I get more of that reflection in the water. I think that's uh, that's the killer. So um, I don't know, I'm gonna give you guys a few different looks. Hope maybe, I don't know, unless some of them are crap, then you won't get to see any of those. But um, for right now, once I'm waiting for the sun to kick off, which it's about to, and I'm gonna shoot this. So I'm gonna shut up. This scene was beautiful. I remember taking a picture with my phone, sending it to my wife saying, look what I found. I loved how I was able to capture the changing of the season along this creek bed. I also loved the reflections that happen in the creek that really tie the composition together. And my most favorite part has to be that tip of red that you see in the leftmost tree. This by far is my favorite photo to date. Now, when I first started in landscape photography, I absolutely loved reflection shots. And I think the reason is being from the desert, I'm not really given much opportunity to shoot reflections because you know we don't have uh, a ton of water <laughs> to work with. So anytime I find myself having an opportunity to shoot a reflection shot, I jump all over it. And this moment right here I'm gonna share with you guys is definitely one of those cases. So let's jump to the field and see what I shot. Now in next week's video, obviously I'm gonna show you guys um, some of the new camera equipment I had, but what we're gonna do is actually head out a little earlier and I'm going through my spices right now, making sure everything looks good and 
getting rid of what I don't need and putting in more of what I do need. But we're going to go back to a spot in Utah, actually, on my way out to Colorado, that this next photo was one I captured there that I want to go and recreate. And so I thought that I would kind of share you guys my first impressions and kind of show you as a teaser for next week's video. Which again, I'm going to ask you if you made it this far and you're not already, hit that subscribe button down below. Also hit that bell icon so you're notified when I post that video where we're talking about the new camera equipment. We're also going to be just doing some good old van camping and photography and sharing uh, chase and fall with you guys here this year. So let's jump out and show you guys this pretty cool scene and I'm excited to see what it looks like here next week. So I'm kind of whacking bushes or bushwhacking back through here and I think I found where I want to be. So I'm going to keep going that way. A couple weeks back, my drone absolutely just crapped the bed. I was about 200 feet up in the air, which was the legal flying uh, height I could be at in that particular area, flying for a client. And my drone all of a sudden fell out of the sky, out of the blue, just fell out of the sky. And there was no saving it. It was absolutely destroyed. So I bought a new drone. This new drone is, was a bit, a bit of a splurge for me, so I went ahead and made sure I got the DJI refresh on this one because it lapsed on my last drone and I had to pay out of pocket to get this one replaced. Well, this uh, last trip, we, um, we also crashed the new guy. So, got the replacement coming, <laughs> so we will have it for this trip. But I've had some uh, bad luck with drones this last month. Um, but the reason I'm talking about this is this next location and the last location I'm going to share with you guys is one that I found using a drone. Now, I knew that there was a viewpoint like this in near Chimney Rock in Colorado, but the spot that I know people park and hike up to, there was like 20 cars. There's a big group going up there. If you know me, I don't like to be around a lot of other people. So I wanted to try and find something different. And I was down driving, you know, filming some content of the van going down through the hills. I saw this big open field. And I was like, that's where I need to go. So I grabbed my bag, hiked up the field, had to wade through some water, and was able to photograph a pretty special scene. So let's jump to the field where I pour my heart out to you guys and show you guys that amazing scene. You know, when I do all the crazy things that I do as a landscape photographer and wildlife photographer, it's moments like these that are exactly what's in my mind when I take my shoes off to wade through a freezing cold river or hike up a steep cliff to a middle to a place I've never been before all hoping for something like this a moment like this and these are the things that I hope I can bring back and share with you guys through my photography because it's moments like these that make me want to keep coming out and make, keep, make me want to keep shooting. And my hope is through my art, I inspire you guys to get out and travel and come out to nature and experience moments like these. But you know, a photo will never do this justice. Neither the video, the video won't do it justice, but 
I am very, very blessed to be witnessing this right now and, and experiencing this. That is a wrap for today's video. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm going to ask you for the third time to subscribe. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this content to let me know that maybe you want me to produce more like this. Also drop a comment down below which is your favorite moment and if you have been an OG subscriber and remember those terribly colored videos and the terrible audio and filming on a cell phone, that whole thing, let me know. We just hit a 4,000 subscriber mark few days ago, which is pretty crazy to say that of the last few years we've made it this far. So I really do appreciate your guys' support. Without you, a big portion of the income streams that I talk about would not be possible. So your guys' support means a lot. And I'm here to create what you guys want to see. So let me know down below what you would like to see. Also, keep an eye out on the community tab. I'm going to be surveying you guys, asking some questions about the Chasing False series. I have some scheduled content for the next few weeks that's going to be coming out, um, buying some time. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get the tr actual Chasing Fall series done for you guys, but I want to make sure it's done right. And uh, so I'll have definitely some content from the field and some more product reviews coming for you guys in the next coming weeks. So also my pre-order link for my 2025 calendar is going to be closing here very soon, probably in the next week. So if you guys want to grab a calendar at a crazy discounted rate, that link's gonna be down there uh, in the description. Calendars are a fantastic way to keep supporting the mission that I have on this channel, which is to create ways for you guys to experience nature through my lens and help you also elevate your adventures. So I appreciate those of you who have already uh, bought your calendars. I'm gonna be hand signing every calendar that is pre-ordered and you, get, you will get priority shipment once I get my actual shipment of calendars in. So. Again, thanks for the support. I will see you guys in the next adventure.